boom what's going on guys welcome to the video in this video I'm gonna teach you three ways to come across and in reality be more confident in conversation let's check it out So back in high school, I just remember a lot of times where I would get into conversations and just be extremely nervous and looking, and at the time, I didn't really know why, but looking back, I know exactly why. It's because I didn't actually know how to have a nice flowing conversation that leads to an outcome that I wanted. Was I trying to have fun and joke around with my friends? Was I trying to get a girl's number? Or was I trying to build social proof with somebody in authority like my principal or lacrosse coach so that I could get something that I wanted? So throughout the end of high school, about my junior and senior year, I really started to look into social dynamics and how to have good body language, how to conversate. And this continued all the way through college where I really spent a lot of my time not studying like I should have been, but learning how to talk to girls and become friends with influential people at the school. And although I probably could have gotten better grades had I studied more, I really don't regret anything because having a good conversation is going to take you so far in life. If you can talk to a powerful person or somebody with a lot of money who you need to invest in your business, then you're really going to be able to direct the outcome to what you want out of that conversation. So let's get to it. The first step is one that I know you have heard of a million times, but I'm going to say it because it is the most important. Remember, communication is 93% nonverbal, meaning the tone and volume of your voice, meaning your body language and your facial expressions. The first thing that you need to ensure you have is good eye contact. And as I've said in some of my past videos, this isn't just staring deep into their soul at every second of the conversation, but knowing when to look away, what direction to look in, and when to really put the pressure on using your eyes. The first thing that you want to practice with eye contact is just being able to hold it and feel comfortable in it. The easiest way that I've found to do this is first to look in the mirror at yourself and literally just stare into your eyes. It is honestly a little bit more comfortable than I thought it was gonna be at first, even though you're just looking at yourself. But over time, you'll start to just feel more and more powerful with your eye contact by just looking at yourself. After you have mastered that, start looking in the eye of people you are comfortable around, your parents, your friends, a significant other, maybe somebody that you interact with often, or people that really just don't matter. The people you see at the bank, the cashier at the grocery store. These last few people are really easy to practice on because they have low impact in your life. And if it gets awkward for whatever reason, then no harm, no foul. Once you have this down, the amount of confidence that you will appear to have and that you will actually have in conversation is going to increase greatly. I would say that this is the number one factor of being confident in a conversation. And if you don't get this down, none of the rest of this video matters. But if you got this down, then let's check out what the second thing is. Once you've gotten the eye contact down, the second part that's really going to not just make you look confident in conversation, but really have you feeling confident in conversation is understanding the flow that conversation should have. Now, I think this is actually incredibly overlooked in any video I've ever seen about conversation, but through diving through thousands of articles, like literally thousands of articles, this is probably the one thing that helped me more than anything else. The biggest thing for me is I never understood that there actually was a flow to conversation. I always thought it was a dynamic process of them saying something and you saying something and maybe it'll go somewhere. But conversations actually have a very logistical flow to it and of course you will have to adapt in some situations but for the most part if you follow these steps you're going to be good in like 90% of situations. And yes, I made up that statistic. So I like to think of conversation as an ebb and a flow. It goes up and down, kind of like a sine wave that you may have seen in math class. Or maybe I'm just a huge nerd. But as you enter conversation, it's the initial rapport building phase where there may be some small talk, but what I've found works best is getting past the small talk as soon as possible. Because number one, it gets people to know that you are serious about having an in-depth conversation and two, it makes you more interesting than 99% of people who go straight in with, hey, how's your day going? Or, oh, oh the weather outside is terrible today. 
So how you can do this really effectively is simply go into a conversation, introduce yourself if that's something that needs to happen, or if you know each other, then you can just move on right on past that. Then you ask one small talk question, but use it to lead you into something greater. So I typically go in with, how's life? Which can be answered a ton of different ways, or if it's somebody who may need some more directing in the conversation and all they respond to that is, oh, it's good. Then I would ask more of a direct question of something that you may know or have noticed about them. This could be something like, hey, I see that you are really well dressed today. Do you have something important going on? Or it could be something like, hey, I remember that you were studying for that special certification for your job. What came of it? This will allow you to transition quickly into something more deep and meaningful that is impacting that person's life, which will allow you to have a more interesting and engaging conversation with that person. After the intro, you engage in what's called deep dive. So you just start asking deeper and deeper questions that typically people are nervous to ask that may be more impactful or may even be something that they don't even want to answer. Now don't go and ask something that you should really not ask, but ask questions that actually get to the deep root of whatever it is that you are talking about. If you are talking about their career, really ask the hard questions of, is this something that you wanna be doing for the rest of your life? Do you enjoy the day-to-day -day of your job or is there something else you'd rather be doing? These questions are the questions that are truly on somebody's mind and really get people to think deep about their own life. After a while of deep dive and deep conversation, the conversation starts to get a bit heavy and this is a good time to lighten it up with some kind of joke. Now from here on out after you've made that joke, you either go back into a deep dive or you end the conversation. If you go back into a deep dive, then it's really just a push and pull between deep dive jokes, deep dive jokes, and if it goes too long, you may either want to move that person to another location with a, hey, let's go grab a drink at the bar, or you will want to find a good time to end the conversation. The thing is that people like deep conversations because they're more interesting, but in reality, they don't wanna be in these super deep, heavy conversations all day, every day, so keep it to a minimum. Plus, if you watch my other video, you know you should leave when the conversation is good and exciting, so in reality, you probably should be leaving the conversation sometime before it gets to that point. Now, this was a, just a quick overview of the structure of a conversation, but if you get these points down, then your conversations are going to be light years better than they probably are right now, or better than 99.9% .9 of the population who I have found, especially in the technology era that we live in today, really suck at having a conversation. Now, don't expect to go into your next conversation and have this down pat because each of those individual steps takes some time to figure out what works for you and your personality, but also to master and know when to drop a joke and when a joke could be completely inappropriate in a deep conversation. Well, once you have all of that down, then this last tip is really gonna help bring all of this together and it'll make the first and second things that I talked about so much easier to implement in a real conversation. So the third thing is something I know you have also heard a million times, just like the first thing. But again, if you can do this one and really, really do it, then the first and second things are gonna be so much easier because you essentially can't do the first one without doing this third thing. And that is to listen. Like you really just gotta listen to them. Not hear, but you actually have to listen to the words they're saying. Too many times we get caught up in conversation because we're trying to think of what to say next. But when you think of what to say next, then you're not even listening to what they're saying now. So if you can just truly listen to the words that they're saying and comprehend what the meaning is behind those words, and in reality, they may not even mean what the words that they are speaking are really saying. There may be some hidden meaning, especially if you're having one of these deep conversations that I was talking about before. And the craziest thing that I found about truly listening is the questions that you ask are gonna be so much more direct, they're gonna be more inquisitive, and the tone of your voice is going to be more natural in a conversation just because you are genuinely curious and you genuinely want to know something because you are really comprehending what that person is saying. 
All right, guys, that's it for the tips. If you can implement these tips, I promise your conversations are going to be wildly better than they have ever been before. And don't worry about being perfect right off the bat. With any of these, they take time to develop and really get good at to the point where it's not something you're thinking about during the conversation, but it's something that just naturally happens because you've done it so many times. Guys, if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. It means the world to me and it helps my videos get out to a lot more people. Definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell if you wanna see more videos like this one because I release videos like this every Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and I'll see you in the next video.